From shallow water reefs to the mysterious deep, Ocean X is on a mission to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world. Here's an insight into the captivating underwater world where corals inhabit. The Northeast Canyons and Seamounts, it's known as the Serengeti of the Atlantic. It's a biodiversity hotspot. It's home to about 75 different species of deep sea corals. It's truly extraordinary for the wildlife that it supports there. These corals are not like shallow water reef corals you might think about. Deep sea corals don't rely on sunlight at all. Instead of being broad and flat like a reef you might find in the Caribbean, they stand more up like trees and they put themselves out into the current. And because they stand out into the water, animals like to get on them. There's lots of other animals that also want those passive particles that they could feed on. There'll be brittle stars and crabs, shrimp, worms. These corals interact with other animal life in a really weird way. They allow certain animals to get on them and other animals to not get on them. There's communication at a tissue or cellular level that we don't understand yet. And when I think about medical procedures that require acceptance of tissue, I think about the corals and products from the marine environment that help in medicines. You know, we have some of the healthiest reefs on the planet uh, in the Red Sea, particularly in these remoter parts of Saudi Arabia. You've probably got more diversity in the reefs within 10 kilometers of this ship in Saudi Arabia than you have throughout the entire Caribbean. I mean, it's just super diverse. We're here on the Ocean Explorer in the Northern Red Sea. It's an area which has been little visited by science. And we have a world-class team composed of geologists, oceanographers, marine biologists, ecologists, fishery scientists. And we aim to look at every facet of this incredible area. And a particular focus has been the corals uh, here in the Northern Red Sea are particularly resilient to change. There's a lot of temperature stress in the area, but the reefs here are better than many that we find elsewhere in the world. We seek to uncover why they have this inbuilt resilience, what makes them so healthy. What's happening on a reef is really dynamic. It's a biodiversity hotspot. The number of species that are on coral reefs rival anywhere on Earth. There's more species than a rainforest. Coral are very, very complex animals. They cover a very small portion of the planet, but they hold a disproportionate amount of biodiversity of the oceans. It's a fascinating thing because it's considered an ecosystem engineer. Similar to trees, you know, provide habitat for other animals, coral reefs do the same thing. It's truly extraordinary for the wildlife that it supports there. Corals were not really that well studied until the 1970s. We probably only have, in some of the best case scenarios, 10, 15 years following organisms that have literally existed for hundreds of thousands of years. Off our coast, the United States, we have these canyons that would dwarf the Grand Canyon. And I would say less than 1% of them have been explored. That's also one of the reasons why it's such an important decade for us to do ocean research so that we can help figure out how we best prepare for all of the damage that we expect to come into the oceans. Deep sea corals are not like shallow water reef corals you might think about. If you dive on a shallow water reef, you see these massive corals that are displayed laterally and like they're reaching out to the sun. Deep sea corals don't rely on sunlight at all. In Norway, we have the highest density of deep sea coral reefs in the world. And some have indicated that these may be stepping stones for the dispersion of other species. When you dive down onto a reef and it's covered in coral and there's so many fish in front of you that you feel like you got 
drop down into an aquarium. That is the most inspirational moment you can ask for, being a marine scientist. The ocean is the life support system for our planet, and we need to be protecting these vitally rich and diverse areas so that we can continue to study them and we can continue to make sure that the ocean thrives and therefore allows us to thrive. The more research we can do and the more steps forward we can make, the closer we are to making sure that this ecosystem survives long term. So basically corals have a special protein. It, it sort of glows back at you, it fluoresces when you shine specific uh, wavelengths of light at it. So Vincent's down there right now with a blue light in a very targeted way so he can look at the different corals and see if they glow back at him. Vincent is like this mad scientist, like neuroscientist that also happens to be really, really passionate and involved in ocean science. And so the work that he was doing before he came to OceanX was in his lab at Yale, and basically they were looking at these um, crazy uh, biofluorescent proteins in coral that essentially can be used to light up parts of the human brain when people are doing like neurological studies or tests. So everything that Vincent does to me has had a huge impact on humans and humankind. I said a nice right. thing about you, but I've stopped that now. Yes, please stop that. <laughs> All right, what we have to do is put together our camera. Wait, okay, I have a question. Yes. So, why do we need a special camera? So we're gonna go down at night when there's no light, and we also wanna capture it on a camera, because we, we wanna use that fluorescent property of corals as a way to determine their health. These reefs that we're out here now are some of the nicest ones of this track, I think. So I think this is gonna look beautiful. My fear is as we get closer to Miami that these proteins are going to disappear and the image is not going to be as beautiful down there. So like there's so much that um, we don't really know about the ocean and tools like this that like are designed by people that care about the space um, and have questions and they want to find out like they'll just build what they need to get the job done. Ta -da. Nice. Ta -da. Ready Maddie? Yep. Let's cut the lights out. Oh. Actually your pants are the best for us. <laughs> so we are in zone nine of our scientific survey. The divers during the day went to sample, and so what they did was uh, mark spots where they found coral that looked healthy, so that Vincent could go down with his The most groundbreaking discovery from this expedition has been these very rich mesophotic communities that we've seen in the Gulf of Aqaba. It's gone beyond my hopes. This is new, this is not known, and we have the duty to report it and make it public and make sure that we preserve this, that this goes into management plans and, and, and conservation. There's gonna be multiple students and colleagues that are gonna benefit from this data a great amount of information that we've collected that cannot be tackled by an individual. It's going to be multiple projects uh, that are going to unfold uh, both in the lab and again in the field somewhere else to compare the Neom area to other places in the Red Sea. Being able to witness this unfolding of life along that gradient is such a privilege but it's also such a, an enlightenment moment. It's been a reconnection with this incredible push you have as a field scientist, as a marine scientist, to discover and describe and analyze and come up with new questions. It's been really refreshing. So I would say it's gone absolutely amazing. A thrilling six weeks for us.